Hello, I'm Dax, and over the next few months I'll be creating a series of guides for the Arma 3 Zeus game mode, with videos covering every important topic a good Zeus should master. I hope you find these videos informative and well made, and I welcome any constructive feedback that you may have in the comments below for any of the videos in this series, or recommendations on topics for future videos that I may not have covered or you think are important enough to warrant their own video. Before we begin, I would like to preface that these guides are not directed at first-timers, although I've tried to incorporate a lot of information that is applicable to first-timers and that some players may not find useful if they are experienced, and assumes that there's some background knowledge of the game mode and things that normally occur in any given session of Zeus. Additionally, these videos will be directed towards the public Zeus environment that can be found on the public BI servers not private milsim servers since many of the topics covered here do not apply to a milsim environment where most of the mission is pre-made ahead of time rather in a public environment where it is made on the fly however there's a large amount of crossover that can be found over found regardless i hope i can impart some knowledge that i've gained over the past few years across the public and milsim zeus environments onto you i have 2500 hours in arma 3 and about 1500 of those in the zeus environment split between game master and player with that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video and the series as a whole. Mission setup and starting minutes. This first video will be focused on the first minutes of any public Zeus match, from sitting in the lobby to the moment the first objective is assigned. If you feel like something's missed here, it'll probably be addressed in a later video, as I'm trying to keep things only in the category that they belong and there's a lot of crossover, like there's a lot of rules applied to multiple points that are going to be made through these videos. First rule, don't ignore players during setup, ever. Everybody who's played Public Zeus has experienced something similar to the following. A mission starts, Zeus places down a spawn point at an airfield or other high traffic area that you've seen a thousand times, and says something along these lines. Just hang out there at spawn for a minute while I set up the first objective, or, okay, I've finished the loadouts and spawn a new spawn point, so go ahead and re everybody respawn, please. The line varies, but the result is always the same. Ra rapid breakdown of any kind of teamwork, grenade spam, team killing, and people rolling their eyes. Most GMs do this because they either see it as the status quo that everybody else does, or they don't know any other way of starting the mission. While no GM means ill when they do this, they don't realize that what's happening in side chat or how long their setup normally takes. It's not uncommon to see quote unquote quick setups that take well over 15 minutes. The longest I think I've seen is 45 minute setup. Often a GM will try and extend the reasonable time limit for a setup by asking players to get into groups or make a squad and tell me who your leader is so they have longer to actually set up their mission. Hey guys, just get yourself miracles now. Most of this can be fixed by just being a faster builder or having a plan set up before you get into the match, but that will be covered in another video. Once in a blue moon, this will work and players will actually break into teams, but in a large majority of cases, people will trip over themselves to say who's in charge or somebody woefully unqualified will try and thrust themselves forward as a squad leader. If you want to try the organized approach, it's imperative that you have a good idea of the personality of those whom you're presiding over. Even the best GM can't force people to play into a milsim style mission, and trying to do so may often result in an explosive reaction from the player base and you being removed from the Zeus slot. In the best case, you get a frustrated GM, and at the worst case, you're kicked from the server. There will be a video dedicated to managing players and communication, so I'm not going to go into any further detail here. Instead of leaving players idle during setup, create their loadouts before going into the match. Don't try and use Arsenal to create their loadouts while they're waiting to actually do something. Do it before you get into the server. Once you are in the server, create their loadouts before placing the first spawn point and immediately give them an objective that either makes them walk, fly, or drive to the first location objective. Doesn't matter if it's built yet. A lot of GMs say, oh, well, I, I, there's nothing for them to do yet, so they have to just wait there which is the wrong idea. Give them something to do. Anything is better than them sitting on their ass at spawn waiting for you to build something. A good Zeus or good GM will be able to build a small mission that will keep the players busy and while they do that first objective 
they build a second, more complicated and higher quality objective that will make up the bulk of the mission or a higher quality second objective. Your first objective should be placed within two minutes of the match starting, including units and properties, any music that's playing, clutter, map markers, etc. Any longer than that and you're asking for trouble. Players will take a long time to get situated in any transport, whether you place down a helicopter or a Hemet truck. Just loading up will take them over a minute because they'll be tripping over themselves to figure out who's driving, what's going on, how they're getting there, etc. Don't waste their time when they'll waste enough of it on their own without your help. Players that aren't bored are less likely to cause problems. I'm do one by one. Hey. Hey. Clear comms. Clear comms. Get Why? Off the wall unless you need it. We'll, we'll, we'll go into serious mode now. We'll go into serious mode now. Okay, we're gonna do a different airport. Two. Always have a logged admin. This one's pretty obvious, but any server without an admin is perpetually on the edge of chaos. Even if things are going perfectly and you have 16 players that are working together in perfect unison and everything is just going phenomenally well. All players know that you are one bad player joining away from everything going to shit. While a team killer or a troll is easily fixed once an admin is voted, the damage they do and the loss of immersion and the attitude of the player base is not so easily remedied. At best, you break immersion until an admin is voted and the troll removed. At worst, your entire mission falls apart and you can lose 50% of your server population. Having a logged admin who isn't afraid of flexing their proverbial muscle can keep a server in check even against the most rambunctious player base. They are also needed to set parameters of a mission properly each time a mission ends, so you're going to need one anyway. There will be a whole video dedicated to how to admin, so I'm not going to go into it here. Besides the obvious effect of removing trolls and preserving order in the server, Admins who are in public Zeus missions have another unique effect that many players don't even know exists up until recently. A game master who is also the admin can execute scripts that allow for far more immersive and expanded experience, adding things such as bomb trucks, suicide bombers, changing the view distance, teleporting players, altering vehicle weapon loadouts, and much, 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 much more. And again, another video on that later on. Having the ability to script in Zeus opens new mission avenues that the players may never have even experienced before in public Zeus, even if they've been playing Zeus for a long time. Now, I can already hear clickety-clack of keyboards typing comments saying that, Admin shouldn't be Zeus, it's too much power for one man to have. And I see the logic of your argument. Having a player acting as a GM and an admin is literally putting all your eggs in one basket, and a bad GM or a bad admin you have no way of fighting back against. However, you remember, voting an admin is a democratic process. Don't give it to the person who asked for it first. If you voted an admin who's not the kind of person you can trust having in your Zeus already, you've, are, you've already screwed up. Here is a power structure of how a public Zeus server works. At the top is the admin, above the GM, and above the mod. The GM and the mod are both underneath the admin, even if the admin is a player on the ground. If an admin really wanted to take the GM slot, he'd just take it. It's two commands and 30 seconds of his life to get into the Zeus slot, and no one in the, no one in the server could say anything about it. Sure, it would probably would end up being disastrous for the admin and emptying the server, but he could do it if he wanted. Whenever you see a Zeus who's also an admin, don't freak out, because you, the players, voted an admin, and when you're voting an admin, you better damn make sure the person you're voting into power you have faith in. You are literally giving them keys to the server until someone else takes their place after they leave, or voting a replacement, which, to be honest, never happens. 3. Always use revive, and usually basic revive. I won't linger very much on this point, but there's literally no reason to use revive in some form. Falling over dead from aimbotting AI soldiers isn't fun, even if the player deserved it, and the revive mechanic allows for a bit of slack and a second wind for players who make errors or who just got unlucky from an AI who is acting erratically. 90% of the time, players will force respawn themselves regardless, which is the same as them just dying, just dying on their own in the first place. Having the option there makes for a better experience, even if it isn't used a single time in the mission. 
If you want your game less forgiving, use the advanced damage model, but this still leaves the problem of AI aiming at your head and just doming you in one shot. 4. Use the start missions with respawn deletion technique. This one is a little bit more obscure, so I'll explain how it's done here. When you start the mission and you get into the Zeus interface, anybody can tell you what happens. You have a screen of loadouts, you're waiting for the Zeus to place a respawn module, and you just sit there until they place a spawn down, you spawn in, and you proceed on your merry way. However, there is something that happens there that a lot of players don't know. When the mission starts, your respawn timer starts counting down as if you had just died. So if Zeus quickly places a respawn marker, then deletes it before the 20 second or whatever amount of time it is runs out, they can get their full permissions without letting anybody spawn in. Now this may not seem like a very important thing to do, but it's much better to do that rather than placing people halfway across the map and asking them to respawn later on. This also links back to my first point of not letting players idle at the start. If you ever ask your player base to respawn en masse, you as the game master fucked up. It's not your player's fault. Guys, just respawn. All that shit you guys have is gonna get deleted anyways. You guys have an arsenal on site. Respawn. If you fly anywhere near the fob, I will destroy it. I don't give a shit about your immersion. Let's do a quick recap of what you should have taken away from this video. Don't ignore players during setup. Always have a voted admin. When appropriate, use scripts to enhance player experience. Always use some sort of form of revive. Never force all your players to respawn at once for any reason. And use a respawn deletion technique to get your permissions before any player spawns. This video was a bit shorter than I expected it to be. And in most videos in this series will be considerably longer since there's much, much, much more going on than what you'd expect. But I hope to see you back here for the next video and for the rest of the series. And I thank you for watching.